I'm the big man, attorney Joey Franks with Big Man Law here in Jackson, Mississippi. And we're back with Judge Middleton today. And it's a pretty interesting one. It's broke up into a couple of parts because, well, you'll see. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but take a look. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Mr. Chris, the allegation is that on or about March 29th, you assaulted Michael Kurth in Three Rivers. It's a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. How do you plead to that charge? Before I plead, I'd like to have it put on the record that they're, uh, for the alleged actions, they're trying to charge me twice. They're trying to charge me with an assault and battery as well as violating restraining order for the same actions. Well, they can do that. Why? It's two different things. But it's the same action, isn't that double jeopardy? No. Uh, Let's say you have a trespass order and you're not supposed to trespass on a piece of property and you enter into the property and punch somebody. Well, they can charge you with trespassing and the assault. So yeah. I'm assuming you wish to plead not guilty that, then? But that's violating two different laws. I supposedly violated with the same action. It wasn't two different things. They're trying to charge me with the same action for two different cases. That's not. I mean, All right. Well, if you want a lawyer, I'll get you one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, I didn't do anything anyway, but from what they said that, from the affidavit that they gave me, the action. Who has the restraint, which judge has the restraining order? Um, Patterson. I have a, a re, now, not an arraignment. I mean, I guess it'd be a preliminary exam conference tomorrow morning with him. Because they're saying I violated the restraining order by assaulting him. Okay, well, all right, we'll sort that out. Set. Attorney pretrial for July 12th, 2024. Mr. Chris owes $1,175 worth of unpaid fines and costs. He has a controlled substance case from 2021 where he owes $175. He has a defective equipment case where he owes $125. He has a previous assault and battery, 221627, where he owes $275. He has disturbing the peace, where he got the minimum fine of $125. He hasn't paid that, 222147. And he has a felony resisting and obstructing reduced to a misdemeanor attempted resisting and obstructing. He owes $475 and he hasn't paid anything on that. So why don't you please take Mr. Christ into custody? Are you... Can I'll we, review can all we please talk about this? Yeah, you go I, back into jail and I'll... You I go have back, my vehicle go, outside and stuff, though. Yeah, okay. You go back here and I'll talk to you in a little bit. Today? Yeah, right now. You're going into lockup. No, I'm at, I, I'm, are you going to talk to me today? Yeah. You keep getting charged with assault crimes and then you don't pay any of the fines. I... I, uh, I, have, well, I, I I'll talk to you in a little bit. All right, so Judge Middleton actually sent the guy to the back. I haven't seen Judge Middleton do that before. Little surprised to see him do that. But what it is, is the guy has a couple of charges already. It's a simple assault case, but he also has a uh, no contact order, essentially, in place of restraining order. Different jurisdictions call it different things. And he breaks the no contact order, obviously, when you go and get into a fight with the person you're not supposed to have any contact with. Surprise, surprise. What is interesting here, and this is where I, I really wanted to stop it, is his argument about double jeopardy. Double jeopardy does protect you from being in jeopardy of life and limb twice for the same crime. Now, if they were charging him a second time for hitting the guy in this one fight, that's double jeopardy. But as Middleton explained, whenever you commit a trespass and then do another crime, you, you have two crimes there. Double jeopardy would protect you, for example, uh, murder case is just the easiest one to come to mind right off the top of my head. If someone committed murder, well, if they're found guilty there, you can't come back and try them for manslaughter of that person because you're putting them in jeopardy of life and limb twice for the same thing. Uh, it rises out of the same event as what this guy is trying to argue, but the, it can rise out of the same event, but there can be multiple crimes, kind of like uh, armed robbery is a good one. You know, you go and you 
commit the crime and then you lead the police on a, a two mile chase and then you get into a shootout with the police at the end of it. With, there's at least three major crimes that you've committed. Armed robbery, felony fleeing, and aggravated assault on a good day. So that's the, the, the best explanation I can give you on how double jeopardy works. But he, he has a, a misconception of it. And this is part of the reason I, I tell folks you really should get a lawyer when you go into to court. Kind of like I go to a mechanic. I don't go to my local auto zone and get the parts and think I can do it because I'm here to tell you I'm not a mechanically inclined person and I know it. I am the last person you want rebuilding a, a engine head in an automobile. But all that said, that's an explanation of double jeopardy and this guy's misconception of it. But I'm also really surprised, like I said, that Middleton sent him to the back, but he had so many other charges that he hadn't paid any fines on or he quit paying fines on and he had done very little to show any progress on this. So here's the rest of it. You felt disrespect anyway. I apologize. I was just trying to ask questions. I wasn't disagreeing or trying to be disrespectful. I was just trying to ask questions. All right, thanks. I just wanted to clear the decks while we take care of the other stuff. This is a return to Joseph Christ. He was here on an assault and battery case. He pled not guilty. I appointed an attorney for him and filed 24779SM and uh, set it for a pretrial for July 12th. Mr. Christ has had a bunch of other cases over the years. And I tried to deal with a bunch of these probably in 2023. And filed 211409FY. You were charged with felony possession of methamphetamine. It was reduced to a misdemeanor use of methamphetamine. There was a probation violation. Judge Patterson gave you 60 days in jail, and there was a $175 fine left over, which you were to pay on a payment plan. Uh, he had an assault and battery where he did 29 days in jail and you owed $275. I think that was Judge Patterson. And you were on the same payment plan. You were going to pay $50 every two weeks. Then you had a disturbing the peace uh, in file 222147 and you owed $125 and on a payment plan. And then I saw you in January on a felony resisting obstructing a police officer reduced to a misdemeanor attempt. I put you a payment plan on all four of these, plus there's an unpaid traffic ticket. And as far as I can tell, you never made one payment um, um, from January. I was, while working at Little Caesars from uh, March of last year up till... December, I was making payments every every check. You said you wanted $50 every check, and I was doing that for months. Well, let's take a look. I, I made several payments, and I, I had them down pretty low, and then I ended up losing my job. They transferred me. Well, you made some payments. Yeah, I was paying. They said I had them down pretty low, at least for the I, from what they told me in the office. Well, that was 50 Then we reduced it to 20 and you did make some payments, and then in January you stopped paying. Right after I lost my job, I, they transferred me to Sturgis, and I just couldn't make the commute. And they didn't really care that I couldn't make the commute. They, you know, they didn't want to transfer me back to Three Rivers. And well, where are you living now? Um, I pretty much stay in my car. I mean, I park at my mom's in, on Third Street in Three Rivers, but I pretty much stay in my car. There's not really room for me at her house, and I'm not trying to overload her so I just pretty much stay in my car. Are you working someplace? No, but on um, the 6th of June, I, there's a WSI job fair they told me to attend and they said that as long as I come there with two forms of ID that they'll, they will have me a job that day. They said I just have to be there. You're right, you did make a number of payments. We reduced it from 50 to 20. And then you stopped paying and we sort of lost track of you. So 
I'm not going to do anything. I'll just say I reminded you okay. Thank you. of the payment plan. We're going to talk about it again on July 12th. So I want to see if you start to make payments by July 12th. At $20, $20 payments? Well, $20 is better than none. Okay, I just, I just wasn't sure what the minimum yeah, had There's to be. a lot of money spread over a bunch of different files. Uh, that's what was so confusing to me about it because they told me one case was, they said it was almost done and then they said that one was at zero and I asked them what that meant and they said that was just one of them that was included in the grouping of it or whatever. But I will definitely go do something and find an odd job or something and get a payment made before July 12th. All right, Mr. Chris, you're good to go. Uh, yeah, you still need to go out to the counter regarding your code appointed counsel. I get these shackles off. Yeah. So Milton brings him back and he has worked it out to where the guy's paying $20 a month. That's all, or was it $20 a check? You, you come pay the $20, move on. And I understand $20 can be a lot for a lot of, a lot of people right now under today's circumstances, but I've yet to find a single judge in 10 years of practicing law where a person stood up in front of the judge and said, judge, I can't pay this full fine amount right now and the amount I originally agreed to for the following reasons. And you show them a, a receipt for a new transmission. You show them how your credit card payments have increased because you had to put it on the credit card. No judge is going to go nail you down when you're trying to get out from under something like that so you can continue to be a productive member of society. If you go to them and you say, this is my problems, this is how I'm reasonably addressing it, here's my plan to take care of the court. Just don't ghost them. That's the worst thing that you can do. And we actually watched a video with Middleton and a woman recently where he told her you've had some moderate success ignoring all this. Most people don't have that level of success. Most people get caught pretty early and it's just a domino effect. So anytime you have any issues with the court, go address them to the court. In fact, they have status conference days where you just show up and say, judge, this is what happened. This is why I'm behind this month. And you show them receipts, show them documentation, back it up. The proof's in the pudding. You lay it out there and nobody is going to go and, and leave you hanging. So, fun video, relatively short one, but a fun one. I had a great time. Y'all have a great day.